That's shown here, a typical experiment in which we have grown uh, mycobacteria, in this case, in a microfluidic device. The bacteria have been engineered to express GFP, as in the previous uh, E. coli experiments. That's why they glow green. So what you're going to be looking at is bacteria grown in 7H9 medium initially, which is just basic broth with no drug added. We'll then switch to isoniazid containing medium. That'll be shown by the INH appearing in the corner there. And look at the response of cells to the drug. We will then wash out the drug. It'll 7H9 will reappear, and we'll look at the uh, regrowth of the rare uh, persisters that survived exposure to the drug. So if we can roll the film, you see cells are actively growing and dividing in absence of drug. As soon as we add the drug, they cease growth within minutes of addition of the drug. It's really an extremely rapid response, and then the cells undergo lysis. So they stop growing very rapidly, then there's a delay of about a day or so before cells began undergoing lysis. This particular experiment uh, involved recording the, the bacteria for a period of about one week. So this is a very compressed time course here. Now remarkably, after prolonged exposure to the drug, the subset of surviving cells starts to grow and divide again at slower rates than in the absence of drug, but at very appreciable rates. Some of the progeny of those divisions die, some survive. Those that survive long enough can then, when the drug is washed out, reactivate growth and in fact, they do so immediately uh, and uh, they resume very rapid cell growth uh, within just a few minutes of washout of the drug. So the response of the bacteria in this case is very different than what was seen by Balabin and colleagues in the case of E. coli responding to the beta-lactam uh, ampicillin. Now using this type of approach, uh, we can, as I said, study the, the response of bacteria at single cell resolution. And this has made it very clear to us that in fact the behavior of these cells is even more heterogeneous than we might have thought. That's shown, uh, one example of this in, in the movie shown here, where you're going to see a rare, uh, rather atypical cell, but one that we think is behaving in an extremely uh, interesting way that we think is pro likely to be very informative about how the drug is actually acting on these cells. So if we could roll the film. What we see again is that cells are growing and dividing in 7H9, we add the drug, they arrest very rapidly, they swell a bit, and then they begin to undergo lysis and disappear from the frame. But focus on the cell over here. It's going to do something rather extraordinary. It arrests, but then in the continued presence of the drug, it eventually resumes very rapid cell growth. In fact, it's growing as fast now as though there's no drug present at all. But clearly, this was not a drug-resistant cell because it did eventually die. In fact, it appears that division is inhibited in the cell even though cell growth is not. So my point in, in showing this sort of rare occurrence is that there's an enormous amount of heterogeneity in the behavior of individual cells within a, bac within a bacterial population that simply isn't captured by the kinds of batch culture methods that we typically use to study bacterial behavior. My personal feeling is that the future of microbiology is going to be to focus on the individuality of bacterial behavior rather than to stick with the averaging methods we have used in the past. And I think this is going to be a particularly important approach for us to take when we want to study the behavior of important subpopulations like the persisters.